This is The Cine Realists, episode 486. My name is Kyle. My name is James. And my name is Zach. And we're here to talk about movies, movie lists, and movie obsession for the next hour or so. Hey guys, welcome back from vacation. Thank you. Thanks, Kyle. You too. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it's good to... I'm refreshed, ready to be back, ready to talk movies. Yeah, a year older too. Uh, yes, it's been a, a, one full year since you all heard from me. Oh my I felt goodness. bad. I was I was going through my my email, and of course, there's like a million Facebook notifications that I missed over the last week, and one of okay. them was uh, Kyle's birthday, and I was like, oh, I missed it. No no text for me, no nothing. <laughs> Poor guy. You know, James, I was waiting for that birthday text or that birthday <laughs> Facebook, and uh, I know midnight rolled around. And turn into the twelfth, and I was like, "Well, <laughs> guess James forgot about me." Just wasn't complete without my no. birthday text. No. Where on the other hand, Zach, you were the second person to wish me happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so who was first? Uh, <laughs> do you remember Kenny Dan's from high school? Kenny Dan's. <laughs> yes. yes. At five minutes past midnight, <laughs> he wished me happy birthday on Facebook. Oh my goodness! He beat me to it. Well, he he's the superior it. friend. Yes, uh, Kenny Dan's. Kenny Dan, shout out. You get Who the mantle. I, I hear from him once a year on my birthday, shortly after midnight. Guys, I have yeah. a question, but um, I can't ask it until we bring our guest in to the podcast because I, I need her opinion on this question as well. We have a special guest this week. It's Kyle's better half. It's Megan. How's it going, Megan? Hi. Hi, guys. <laughs> Megan, is a, Megan is a huge Fast and Furious fan. Huge. Huge. Okay. Huge Fast and Furious fan. So we had to have her on the podcast to talk this movie. I'm excited to be here. Nice. Well, this is my question. What do you need my opinion on? This is my question. I need all your opinions. But uh, (laughs) when somebody sends you a Facebook happy birthday, do you give a crap? (laughs) No. Because you know it just popped up in their notifications. They didn't actually remember your birthday, right? We actually talked about this on Sunday when it was your birthday, Kyle. Um, You're like, oh, this person Facebook messaged me. I was like, yeah, it's because Facebook tells you to message them. (laughs) I only really care about the texts or the actual phone calls that I get. Sure. Or if I get one from somebody who doesn't say it every year on Facebook. Like sometimes I'll get one from like somebody I haven't talked to in a long time where I'm like, yeah. oh, I actually noticed that one. But like the people who yeah. I know are on Facebook constantly who say happy birthday to every single person we, you know, follow in in tandem. It's kind of like, OK, I mean, I appreciate the effort All right. of, of one click, but come on. I've got to weigh on this because I, I think I I hard disagree with James on 80 <laughs> percent of this. OK, let's hear it. So I think. Guaranteed, if someone texts you happy birthday, I that's very appreciated because they have cross platforms, right? They were reminded on Facebook and then they cross platforms and texted you. Sure. Um, it doesn't matter that they were reminded, they could have ignored it, right? How many people are you reminded on Facebook it's their birthday and you do nothing about it? Oh, I ignore all of them. Exactly. So if you text someone, that's like that's the best, okay? Now it Someone Facebooks you happy birthday. Again, Facebook told you them to do it. Uh, it's not super special, except they ignore some people and they didn't ignore you. So that's that's a, a soft, soft nicety. I was like, sure. oh, they now the people that are on Facebook and wish every single person happy birthday, that doesn't mean anything to me. <laughs> but if they're selective about who they wish happy birthday to and they pick you, great. If it's cross platform, fantastic. <laughs> I think a text is as good as a phone call because I think sometimes the texter is like, well, it's their birthday. I don't want to take up their time. So I'm going to text. Mm-hmm. I appreciate a text more than a phone call. Except These for the sometimes. People, except for the people that should call you. Right. And like then my they grandma. text you and you're like, family is the only ones that should call. Oh, hmm. my parents definitely texted me. Happy birthday. <laughs> With emojis. <laughs> <laughs> but I also had some some people Facebook message me happy birthday because that's how like we communicate. Like we don't text. We communicate over messenger. 
So yeah. I felt like that was a another that's a, a step of forward too. Um, I put on I, the same level as texting. Can I tell you something that one of my friends does that I th- think is uh, crazy? Please, sure. They have all of Facebook's um, birthdays on an RSS feed, and they've set up an e- an automatic email that goes out to everyone on their birthday, and it's like a media merge where it fills in their name oh. and it randomizes the content between like 20 different random messages. And so people think they're getting a personalized happy birthday email from this person and it's just going out automatically. It's a form letter. Yep, yeah, for sure. I really hope that form letter breaks someday and so gets an email like dear name, happy birthday. <laughs> and then there's like 20 messages <laughs> and then sure. it says, yeah. <laughs> That almost seems like more work to set up than just to more work on the front end. And then you don't have to remember ever or just ignore those people. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. It's I do think there used to be a time when people would say happy birthday to every single person on Facebook. And I do think in the last five years that's waned. So people who do say happy birthday on Facebook, they're at least making that effort. I feel like less and less people are just. Okay, it's whose birthday is it today? I'm gonna say happy birthday to that person. I literally almost never go on Facebook. It's like if I liked your post, it's because Facebook emailed me about it, guaranteed. And uh, it's pretty much just a birthday tracker for me at this point. <laughs> Why do you get Facebook emails? Yeah, I've not gotten that kind of Facebook emails off. in years. <laughs> That's the only part of Facebook I like. <laughs> the, the, e- the email. Yeah, like 99% of the time, I don't even click the link. It won't, and it doesn't even give you a preview of what the post is. I'm just like, oh, so and so posted. I don't even bother to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> but every now and then, somebody who I know never posts will post something. And I'm like, all right, I will click that. I have a minute. <laughs> That's funny. And nine times out of 10, wasn't worth the click. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, it's never worth the click. That's why it's meant to, you're not supposed to click. You're supposed to just scroll past things. Uh, Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Facebook is not like a hunt and seek kind of app. It's, you're (laughs) supposed to just uh, let it flow over you. Sure. Anyways. Anyways. Well, welcome back guys. We took last week off a rare, no podcast episode week. How was everybody's vacation? Does anybody have anything uh, to say? I don't know if this is a check-in, but... Well, it was a busy week for me. I, the th- July 3rd was my son's first birthday. Yeah. Hey. And July 4th was my anniversary. Yay. Yeah. Nice. Six years, right? Yeah. And my country nice. turned older. Oh. <laughs> Freedom. <laughs> America. God bless America. <laughs> You guys are so ironic about it. Uh, you think? <laughs> <laughs> I like America. I'm not. I've, I've decided I'm reclaiming the flag. Like all, whenever, mean? like uh, literally, one of my uh, my nephews was talking about how the flag has he like he doesn't want to wear American flag paraphernalia because it's associated with like alt right stuff. And I'm like, nope, don't accept it. I'm wearing the flag. I don't. I don't care. They don't. They're not allowed to take it like that. Uh, but he had a point. He's like, all the images oh, yeah. of people like the Capitol riot. All those images are like people just like wearing the flag as like a Superman cape. It's absolute insanity. What kind of logic loops those people put themselves through in that moment? Uh, and I refuse. In fact, I'm tempted to add a flag to my Twitter avatar, but I'm pretty sure people would misread that. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh no, James has gone full, full Q- QAnon. Full QAnon, yep. It's somehow the American flag is a QAnon symbol at this point. But at Yo QRB. <laughs> I wonder if it's taken. <laughs> you probably get some easy followers that way. James, how was your vacation? It was good. It was awesome. Uh it's uh the the Georgia mountains are really nice, I would say. It was hot, but not the same kind of Florida hot. I mean, you guys don't suffer this up where you guys are, but Zach and I do. It's like brutally wet down here 
And you can feel it just like as you drive back from Georgia to Florida. It's like, oh, it's the same hot, just a different hot for sure. Uh, but yeah, it was great. I went tubing down a river twice Ooh. in one week. That was fun. Hung out with my cousin who I hadn't hung out with in like 20 years. Uh, literally hadn't seen in 20 years. So that was fun. Um, yeah, and got to spend a ton of time with my son, which is hard to get. Time is hard to get when they're 23 years old. <laughs> Especially and like when they're a five, full week. you can't get rid of them. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, when they're 18 and up, you're going to be like, why can't I see you for more than a few hours at a time type of thing? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, cherish it while you got it. But um, yeah, it was good. How about you guys? We went to Lake Michigan mm -hmm. with another um, tripod family. They have a five-year-old and um, we just hung out, played games, went to the beach. What else do we do? Oh, it's a really cool public amusement park in Green Bay, Wisconsin, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. um, where it, it was a bunch of like carnival rides, but it doesn't, they don't move them around, like they're stationary. This is a publicly funded park in Green Bay. Uh, Every ride takes tickets, usually one to four tickets, and tickets cost 25 cents each. Hmm. So we got there and we asked, the, you know, like we're going to buy tickets and we say, you know, well, how many tickets should we buy? How much should we need? They're like, oh, you could probably get by on $5 a person. So we bought, there's three of us, we bought $20 worth of tickets, went on rides. There's an actual like wooden roller coaster there, like a real full size one, bunch of kids rides. And at the end of the day, we had about $5 in tickets left over. So they really have dialed in that number. <laughs> it's too bad you ignored his advice. <laughs> I, I, yeah, That's we true. did. But it's crazy to like think we could take a family to a, essentially an amusement park. Nothing like Six Flags style, but still with lots of you know cool rides, especially for the kids. And it cost us $15 for the whole day. 20 yeah 20 <laughs> it should have cost us 15 but like can you imagine entertaining a family for a full day for that amount of money dollars. yeah that's yeah. crazy it is crazy. isn't yeah. green bay also like where the team is owned by the fans it's like the one mm -hmm. nfl team yeah mm -hmm. what yes of, yeah what a bunch of socialists up there geez <laughs> <laughs> don't tell them that yeah <laughs> That's uh, that's awesome. I wish we had that down here. We just have the traveling ones that are way overpriced. And dirty and not yeah. secured to the ground. Right. Oh, we have, we have tons of those all over here, too. <laughs> but it just happens in Green Bay. They have a, a regular one. Sure. That's it was awesome. lovely. Well, uh, over the last two weeks, we each also saw a movie in a movie theater, right? Mm -hmm. That all occurred for us, I think. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and we're going to talk about that movie today. But first, we got a little bit of housekeeping to do. Just a quick reminder, there's a video version of this podcast you can watch on YouTube. Go to YouTube, search Cinerealist. You'll find it there. You can also support the podcast on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Cinerealist. Support the podcast. Get extra after show audio, amongst other things, depending on how much you like us. You could also leave an Apple podcast review on Apple podcasts. Leave us a review uh, and a rating five stars only. Maybe leave us some review text. If you leave review text, we'll talk about it on the podcast. We got one within the last two weeks that we're going to talk about right now. It's a short one from Allie house. She gave us five stars because five stars only. And they write, I like this podcast quite a bit, which refers to a significant amount. <laughs> the, perf the perfect review. I love it. It's um, Quite a bit refers to a significant amount. It, it's a thing now, right? Because it's referenced. It <laughs> I, cannot be deleted from our podcast reviews. It's, it's a meme associated with us now, an yep. audio meme. It's a forced meme, but, you know, it's a meme. Incredibly regardless. forced. Yep. <laughs> but it worked. We brute forced that thing into the the, the, the Cinerealist universe, and we're reaping the benefits now. We no. definitely did, for sure. Uh, you can also send us a listener email to heyguys at cinerealist.com. We got one of those over the past two weeks as well. Kyle, hit us with it. 
Yeah, so this is from Troy, and he actually addressed this to me. He says, Kyle, I would like to suggest that you spice things up by calling these lists something else. Uh, perhaps top last 10. Neither of your comrades, I guess you guys are socialists, have argued over this title <laughs> as of late, and I fear they're growing weak in their stubbornness. And he provides his own top 10 last 10. Um, what? Well, yeah, tradi- traditionally, uh, when I would uh, introduce the last 10 top 10s, I would tend to switch it back and forth and just see if James would notice, and he mm-hmm. would just never notice. So oh, I, I, notice. I don't think that. I just let it go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And traditionally, I intentionally only say top 10 last 10. <laughs> Kyle, do you, Kyle and Megan, do you come down on last 10, top 10, or te- top 10, last 10? I've, I've come down on top 10, last 10. Yep. Because it, it is the, it is the top to 10 movies of the last 10 you've watched. Mm hmm. Megan, as a avid listener, I have no opinion. No opinion. <laughs> no opinion. It's, prob- it's probably the perspective of most listeners. <laughs> I had to get a clarification on what it meant, but now that I know what I means, I don't think about it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, Troy did send us his top ten, last ten, or if you're weird like Zach, last ten, top ten. Okay. Uh, his his number ten is the woman in the window from 2021. We talked about this one. Uh, he did not enjoy it. His number nine, All Quiet on the Western Front from 1930. Uh, this is a, a World War One movie. Zach, you've seen this, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised it's so low on his list. I liked it. He thought it was enduring. <laughs> he was enduring it. it. <laughs> but I, I get it. It is a list movie, and sometimes you feel like you're just enduring one of these movies. So I totally get it. Uh, his number eight is Georgetown from 2021. Um, Christoph Waltz is in it, but other than that, I know nothing about this movie. Yeah. Number Never seven is American Murder, The Family Next Door from 2020. Uh, he calls it impacting. <laughs> What's this? Which which uh, American Murder is this about? Is this about the dad that like killed his whole family? Uh, I, I, you know, I've kind of lost track of all the various murder TV shows and series and movies a little much for me. So I do not know. Oh, this guy's the worst. Okay. Okay. Now this is going to be about terrible about American families, which dad who killed this whole family. The one that, uh, well, the one that, the one that did it and then his neighbor caught it on the. On the ring yeah, camera, he just pretended like they ran away, or like I don't know what he pretended, but he was a total sociopath about it afterwards. Just trying to cover oh, it up. Is this the guy who then ran off with a mistress? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I kind of remember this guy now. Ugh. D- does he have a name? Like one of those? Yeah, but who cares? Okay, was yeah. Let's not name him. Everybody has a name. <laughs> but he's not like a Scott Peterson or a Drew Peterson or a <laughs> what? I don't know. Who the... <laughs> Other than that, he shares a lot of similarities. <laughs> so Georgetown right. is not only stars Christoph Waltz, he directed it. It's his directorial debut. Interesting. It's based on an ambitious oh. social climber who becomes the main suspect in his wealthy wife's death. Related. Um, What's funny is Troy's email. He's basically like, um, this movie made Christoph Waltz look like a ho-hum actor. Um, <laughs> anyone that works with him should call Quentin Tarantino first to ask how to direct him. And it's like he's directed himself. <laughs> 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 All right. His number six is Bird Box. Uh, this is the 2018 Netflix movie with Sandy B. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a yeah, very good he movie. He liked this movie too much. Yeah. Uh, I've never seen it. Probably not going to watch it. Yeah. You got to watch it with eyes wide open, though. <laughs> That's the the terrible Stanley Kubrick sequel. His number five is Nobody from 2021. We all liked this, and so does he. Nice. Agreed about the Conan O'Brien podcast where uh, What's His Name is on. It's good. Uh, do you guys listen f- to the Conan podcast? I do. No. It's great. Yeah, it's good. Uh, let's see, his number four is The Wrong Missy from 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Shocked. This, this was one of your last pre-pandemic episodes, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember, Zach, you hated this movie. Well, it's not so much that I hated it. It's that it's terrible. Okay. <laughs> I don't have any animosity against it. I, don't th- I, didn't, I didn't think it was terrible. I think it is what it is. 
you know, I, I, it's not trying to be much more than it is. That's true. I uh, probably liked it better than his number three. His number three is Mitchell's versus the machines, which we liked. He liked this quite a bit and quite a bit <laughs> refers to a significant amount. Quite a bit <laughs> refers to a significant amount. That's number That's two. two reference. I, 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 I think it's official now. <laughs> If it wasn't already. Now we got to work on this one. It's not a tumor. <laughs> well, he does have two more on his list. <laughs> ah. It's not a tumor. Uh, number two is Nanook of the North from 1922. I know nothing about this movie except that it's called Nanook of the North. This was mm. on my uh, one of my last 10 top 10s. Okay. Recently. Um, I watched it and enjoyed it a lot. It's really fun to watch. And then his number one is A Quiet Place Part 2. He loved, loved, loved it. I haven't seen it yet. Haven't seen it yet. Me neither. Want to. I wanted to see this in theaters because it felt like a movie that might be fun with a giant crowd. And you can still see it in theaters, but I guarantee there won't be a giant crowd there. I don't know if you want to see a movie that's supposed to be so quiet in a theater with people like chomping popcorn and oh, rustling in their seats. I saw the first one in a movie theater and it was awesome. Same here. I okay. Mean, I, I don't remember people chomping popcorn. I remember people being like dead silent because it was like that movie. Like that it was super intense. I, they were probably remember, chomping popcorn, but it didn't bother me. <laughs> in my experience, they were, when I saw it in the first one in the theater, they were chomping popcorn. And then within like 10 minutes, people were like, oh, this is not that kind of movie. And it got, it got pretty quiet. Sure. I'm looking forward to it, though. It's it's It won't take very long. I mean, literally like the day before it came out, they announced the 4K for 90 days after the theater release, which is crazy turnaround <laughs> like they, they've decided post pandemic that release windows literally mean nothing anymore <laughs> yeah they're, <laughs> they're kind they're of awesome now <laughs> like the ones you have a passing interest in will probably hit streaming services in record time these days which is great or vod at minimum so thanks well, troy for your email as always yeah thank you troy um, we also got a comment on the website from Andrew James. Uh, this was from our episode where we just played games from 482. We did Movie Taskmaster and Reverse Movie Bluff. Um, this will be a fun exercise, guys, in seeing if we remember what any of his things are referring to. Okay. I'm ready. <laughs> okay, let's go for it. He says, this was great. I'd like to reverse Movie Bluff. His first point, fury and furry are different words. I have no idea what he's referencing. <laughs> well, I know but, what he's talking about. Oh, okay. Th there, is that James, one of your movies was Fury Vengeance or Furry Vengeance or something. Yeah. It's Furry Vengeance. And I think I said Fury Vengeance. Okay. But it is uh, Furry gotcha. Vengeance. Awesome. Uh, he said, didn't Brendan Fraser and Steve Buscemi also star together in Airheads? I had the same thought listening to that episode. They are in Airheads together. Here's the question. Who's the third guy in Airheads? Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler, correct. But why did he bring that up? Did I mention another movie that Steve Buscemi and uh, Brendan Fraser were in? Y yes. One of your movies, was it a road trip movie with with Steve Buscemi and Brendan Fraser? I can't remember if it was fake or real, but one of your movies had those real. two in it. Okay. And then, Zach, you were like, why would Steve Buscemi and Brendan Fraser ever be in the same movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we should have caught airheads at the moment. So mm -hmm. good job, Andrew. Uh, next, he says, Six Pack is great. I watched the heck out of that VHS when I was a kid. No clue what that's referring to. <laughs> so someone's movie must have been Six Pack. Oh, okay. Must have All been. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then he says, Friends with Money is by the same director who did Gandolfini's last film, Enough Said. It's worth a poke. Okay. I think that was one James, of my the, real ones. It was. These yeah. are all James's. Andrew Andrew must only wa like watch the movies of people who share the same first name as his last name. <laughs> yep. I think it's That's a how he does it. Yep. He says, great show as always, guys. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah, we don't mention that because 
you know, there's a uh, hundred other things to mention, but you could always leave a comment on the website too. <laughs> we will see it yeah. there as well. I will say it is very hard to find a contact on your website. I tried finding your email address on yeah, the website I and it, I couldn't find it. I don't know if it's on the website. I think there is a contact page, but not the email itself. Hmm. We, We're going we've discussed a, the website needs a little zhuzhing. Yeah, it's been under redesign for four or five years now. One of these days. <laughs> Which is how long you've been doing this podcast. <laughs> if you, if uh, you're wondering where to email the show, it's hey guys at com. You got it. All right. Let's get into this week's movie of the week. The title of the movie is F9, but it's also known as F9 colon the Fast Saga or Fast and Furious 9. It's in theaters now. Here's a clip. That was F9, also known as F9 colon The Fast Saga or Fast and Furious 9. This is an American action film directed by Justin Lin, who's directed a couple of the other entries into this series. It stars Vin Diesel, Michelle Rodriguez, Tyrese Gibson, Ludacris, John Cena, Natalie Emanuel, Jordana Brewster, Soong Kang, Michael Rooker, Helen Mirren, Kurt Russell, and Charlize Theron. Are any of those spoilers? No. Nope. need to beep no. any of those? Okay. Those, all those people are in the trailer, evidently. <laughs> They're all on the poster. They're all on the poster. Perfect. The official IMDb plot synopsis for F9 is Cypher enlists the help of Jacob, Dom's younger brother, to take revenge on Dom and his team. Mm, okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> Cypher didn't hire him, did did Cypher? Yes. Yes. But that's not what the movie's about. I mean, no. it, is the, it is the basic first 45 minute setup of the movie, yes. But it absolutely is not where I the movie Cypher goes. I thought Cypher was like in a prison. Yeah. She gets broken out at the very beginning of the movie. So, Kurt, as they say, Kurt Russell's in this movie. Kurt Russell appears on a video screen for 30 seconds. Mm, I don't know. There's another yeah, moment that's spoiler that he shows up in. Okay. Well, apparently you can spoil this movie. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember. I, I don't remember. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. So, so like, right. That's, that's how the movie starts. They have to go recover. Like, they, they as being, I don't even know what the team's called. Dom's team. They pick up. The family. The family. The family that's right. <laughs> they pick up this in, encrypted distress signal from Kurt Russell. That his plane is crashing, the plane with Cypher, aka Charlie's Theron's on it. They go to recover the plane. The, you know, the the pl as much as I enjoy these movies, sometimes the plot is really completely unnecessary. Or not even there. <laughs> or not even there, yes. There's sure. just one action sequence following an action sequence following an action sequence. They're, right. Uh, these movies are kind of like Mission Impossible to me. It's like, what's how can we set up a cool action sequence and let's have some plot filler in the in, in the middle? Mission and, Impossible at least makes sense. Yeah, that's and true. And they go from like one to the next. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Um, but uh, yeah. Anyway, the like John Cena breaks Cipher out of prison to put her in another prison. I guess. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I man I must be remembering this totally wrong I thought John Cena and that other guy the money guy that they were working together and so John Cena crashed a plane not because he was working for Cypher but because he wanted those globe halves and that's why they had Cypher in prison Mr. Nobody had Cypher and the half of the globe yes and, and what they wanted was the half of the globe, not Cypher. They just took Cypher and threw her in a right. prison. But it didn't seem a like valuable hacker. It didn't seem like Cena was working for her. He was working for the money guy to get the globe halves. Right. This is what I got from it. 
which I, I literally watched the movie today. That doesn't mean this is correct because there was a lot going on in this movie, I would say. But this is what I got from it is that uh, Cypher hired John Cena to get half of the whatever that orb thing is. And then over the course of it, in a scene that we didn't see, John Cena double crosses Cypher, a.k.a. Shirley's Theron, with the rich guy. Okay. Mm. okay and they don't sense. really explain that until you see Cypher for the first time in the uh, plastic crate, glass box cage, or whatever. Yeah. Glass box. Yeah. yeah. Whatever that thing was. And yeah. I think they thought that was a reveal that like Cypher mm. was in that glass box. Because they, they give her like a little bit of a monologue and then they all of a sudden like pull the camera out and you see her in a glass box and it's like oh okay so she's not just talking to them she's captured right um i mean they didn't hold the reveal very long maybe 30 seconds but yeah no they got to get to the next action sequence got to all it. i know is imdb has gone hard on the no spoiler synopsis for sure <laughs> they have the last couple months maybe a year the synopses have gone from like informational to like practically the tagline of the movie i would say as far as the information they give you do uh, they want you to look at a trailer is that why they're doing it i guess i think they want you to buy something from amazon i think that's the purpose of imdb at this point <laughs> Because there's so much real estate for Amazon related things, I would say. Uh, at least on the website. I know the app's different, but I don't use the app. So, all right. So, we're going to talk no spoilers here for a few minutes and then go into spoilers for F9. And really, for the rest of the podcast, it's going to be spoiler heavy or spoiler. It's going to be free for spoilers throughout the rest of the podcast. So after F9, we're going to talk about the other Fast and Furious movies. If you haven't seen those, you probably shouldn't listen to that discussion. If you care, uh, Kyle is of the opinion that you can't really spoil F9. Maybe you can't spoil the other ones. I don't know. <laughs> I think there's a little bit to be had here in some of the twists and turns, even if most of them are stupid. <laughs> But it is fun to see how stupid they are in the moment for the first time, I would say. Uh, and I, this is one thing I will give the Fast and Furious franchise is that even though the twists are stupid, they make a concerted effort to explain everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's very rare that they do something that's like a, a big sweeping change or anything like that. Sometimes they explain it way after the fact but they never just leave things dangling forever type of thing um for the most part maybe i'm wrong on that i mean they've gone like literally movies before they retcon something uh but i think they generally eventually make sense of it regardless so um f9 though i not my favorite fast and furious movie for sure I would say I, I I know we're going to talk about the other ones next, but I definitely feel like F9 is just an extension of F8. And that's another one that I just don't prefer. I very much feel like Fast 7 was the end of this for the most mm. part, at least for oh. me. <laughs> it felt like that movie, both in real life and the execution of the movie, the end of the movie, felt like a good send-off for the series in general. Uh, also a good send-off for one of its main actors. And I kind of feel like they're treading water at this point with these things. Um, that's not to say that there's no fun to be had in F9. There definitely is fun to be had. And there's mayhem and a lot of silliness, I would say. But... Uh, but yeah, I think that I think the shtick is getting old here and there at times. But there are two more movies coming. I know. I know. <laughs> There's two more movies and they're like the same movie, right? It's like part 10 is two movies, I think is what I heard. I mean, it, it does really ask like, where are these movies going? What's the point of this story? Right. And I, th yeah. I feel like this one, 
which has a lot of flashback sequences and not a flashback, lot. not flashbacks to scenes we've seen, like flashbacks that occur before the first Fast and Furious movie, specifically with the Dom character. And they're kind of explaining something that none of us needed to be explained in order to introduce a new character. And they spend a lot of time doing this. And it is like a that sequence, that storyline, which weaves throughout F9 is, I guess, necessary for the character. But we're, we already know Dom cares about family. It's been drilled into our brain movie <laughs> after movie. And, and I understand that it also supports that. It's just we already understood that. So I'm not sure what it added other than 20 minutes onto the movie in order to introduce a new character that didn't it's like they had to fill the quota of muscular men and because the rock wasn't there and statham wasn't there we had to put somebody in there that was big and strong and could fill that hole and john cena just didn't do it for me yeah i agree with that as well like i think john cena he's a big guy he's not a great actor. He does have a level of charisma, not rock levels of charisma, but some levels, I would say. <laughs> Megan disagrees just based on I the disagree. facial expression. I just think he was okay. Not not for me, not for the movie. <laughs> sure. He he has shown charisma in other roles, like Trainwreck for example. Mm -hmm. Um so he, I think he has the ability to to be not he doesn't have to be funny for this role but to be charismatic to be more than just like a stone face piece of granite and that's all he really was in this movie like if if this was the first time i'd seen john cena in a movie i've been like oh okay so here's just a wrestler who is big and strong and he's just sure. showing up because he's a, a presence um but we know that he can do other things mm -hmm. so he could be better I I agree. I found I found the first flashback good. I, I I didn't mind seeing like like we've heard about Dom's father's death. We've heard about Dom. Um, yeah, we we've we heard that that story before. So I didn't mind seeing like that opening of you know going back to the eighties and here's the race and here's what happens to Dom's father. But then we kept going back to the eighties and the early nineties mm -hmm. and. I, I had nothing wrong with those actors portraying those people, um, but it was just like I, I didn't need so much Dom backstory. And you're right. They're really trying to force in a new sibling in the ninth movie of the series <laughs> when it's been very established. He, it's like he, Dom and his sister are a very strong presence. And we've never heard a mention of this mysterious ninth brother <laughs> or third yeah, brother from movie one. They've been brother and sister and they never mm -hmm. mentioned this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not even once. And it kind of felt like, like, I, I understand what they, they wanted to give a personal connection, you know, just to, for more motivation. I get it. Uh, but why couldn't he have just been a bad guy? I don't know. Yeah. Right. It would have been just didn't need to be related for me. <laughs> in yeah, fact, it, the it, fact it, that they were related was distracting to me. Mm -hmm. it, it, you're right. It didn't really add besides the theme being family it didn't really add anything to the movie yeah yeah in general that's how i felt about it the only good john cena movie that i have seen and i've seen a couple well i like train wreck train wreck's all right um but the wall is good he's in that mm -hmm. he plays have you seen that no he plays a uh like a soldier in iraq or afghanistan one one of those wars and it's basically an ent entire movie shot with him up against this wall in the middle of the desert with a sniper coming after him. Yeah. So if you want to see a good John Cena movie, check out the wall. It was, it's a fun movie and he's like the central character of it. And it, it's all dependent on his performance. And it's a movie that's like just well made for him. Whereas this one, I don't know, maybe not so much. Zach, what did you think? of f9 well first of all maybe not so much is a little generous to john cena in this film <laughs> okay. um every time it cuts to a close-up of john cena mm -hmm. with his dopey dog look it's just it's it's, <laughs> it's laughable 
It's comical. <laughs> like he's got such a goofy face. Hmm. Um, it's true. And it's rubbery. It's so rubbery his face. It's, it's just if it's Jim Carrey when he's wearing the mask. Um, <laughs> and uh, every time, it, like there'll be some dramatic scene, it'll cut to him, and it it and it just looks, it looks like he has been slightly blown up with a little bit of helium. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just barely he's forcing his lips to keep stay closed otherwise the helium will escape and he just has to keep them closed it's um with that dopey dog look he is uh, he was miscast strictly for the close ups they like i'm sure he's a you know a capable actiony guy i'm you know he could he could throw me um but it's just it's just so silly um okay so what did i think of F9, which is like a button on the keyboard. <laughs> um, this movie is hard to uh, critique because it is um, part of the fun that it's trying to present is the fact that it's silly, right? Like it, it's like, don't take us too seriously. And if you do, then you did this wrong because these, these movies are about being ridiculous and fun and crazy. And so like, if it turns out to be just really stupid and silly, that's like, well, that was, that was the, that was part of the fun. You know what I mean? So it's hard to critique the movie a little bit. I, I, I will say this. The movie is very silly. Like the, the action is intentionally super silly, which I'm, I'm on board with. I'm fine okay. with silly action. That's totally awesome. Here's here's what I don't, what I'm not on board with, is uh, don't pair that with incredible self serious pretensions of like, the, you know, this is this is important cinema, or or I'm I'm <laughs> I'm spreading a message to the world. When you tie the two together, you suddenly realize that the silliness is not. It's it's not a wink and a nod as much as they want it to be. It is no no. I actually want you to just kind of love this, <laughs> um, and and really I think it all comes in the lap of Vin Diesel. Oh yeah. So go ahead, Zach. go ahead, Zach. Vin Diesel, I think might as presented in this movie might have the biggest ego of anyone I've ever <laughs> conceived of in my life. Um, there are Absolutely. several, there are so many like um, uh, Christological references and biblical references in this movie. Uh, they are like heavily peppered in this film, like references to uh, Jesus in the Bible. And, absolutely Vin Diesel thinks that he's God, at least the God of this universe. There's one scene early on where he's talking to his son mm -hmm. um, who's kind of like ridiculously curly haired and like uh, sun dappled. It, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Anyways, he's talking to his son and he's like saying goodnight prayers with him. And he's like, remember, God will always be in your heart. I'll be in your heart. Like that's right. almost word for word what he says. He doesn't say I'll be in your heart as well or two. He's like, God will be in your heart. I'm going to be in there. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, Come on, Dom. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Um, there's more. He does a, he does a Samson at one point in the movie, but well, um, yeah, I don't know. The, it, uh, this movie, I, I was fine with it. And to, to your point on Vin Diesel, I'm pretty sure everyone in these movies knows they're making fun, dumb summer blockbusters, except for Vin Diesel. And he thinks he's making serious cinema with cars. I, I, yeah. I read an interview where he talked about working with The Rock and he described working with The Rock and how he had to use Fellini-esque tactics <laughs> like The Rock needs direction from Vin Diesel. Hmm. Yeah, in Italian neorealism. Yeah, yeah exactly. does doesn't need that. Um, can I just go through some of the characters with you? Because okay, so I, the Petersons over here, you guys are super fans. Super fans. Yeah, you know these movies very well. You get excited about when each one comes out. Yeah, I would not describe myself as a super fan. Okay, I would describe myself as someone who is aware of the Fast and Furious franchise. <laughs> okay. Um, you, you're an unaware fan. Yeah, I have seen some of them. Okay. <laughs> um, characters that I 
I really like. Go Ludacris. for it. Ludacris. Ludacris is oh, fantastic. Of course. Yes. Of course. Mm-hmm. He's the best. Yes. Uh, r- great. Ludacris is awesome. The guy that he's always joking around with. Tyrese. Tyrese. Uh, Tyrese. Tyrese. Not good. Oh, Tyrese. I like Tyrese. I like Tyrese. You, no. you, you can love Tyrese. That's great. He's not I got good. The I'll sense. agree with that. But at least at least when he shows up, you're going to be in inter- it. They're going to try something stupid and it'll be funny. Let me let me posit something right now. I don't think Tyrese had a scripted line in the entire movie. I think they every time he opened his mouth, they said, get this point across. And they let him just improv. <laughs> he, he's every, the punch up guy. Everything he said felt like an improv and just kind of like a lit, like 20 percent f- more fluffy or rambly than it needed to be. Like a guy working out his his tight five minutes on stage kind of a thing. That's what it felt like to me. Whereas Ludacris, hmm. everything he said was scripted, I felt like. I think you might give too much credit to Tyrese with that, which I know was kind of a backhanded compliment you were trying to make. <laughs> but Tyrese is like a former model. He's like barely an actor, I would say. <laughs> the idea that he's punching up the script on the set, I think is a, a leap, maybe. <laughs> I think they're like, hey, Tyrese, say something about like uh, how we're... Yeah, maybe maybe they're throwing lines at him and he's repeating them, yeah. but I doubt he's constructing them on his own. <laughs> um, uh, let's see, Vin, uh, come on, why is yeah. he even like a action star? Uh, yeah, it's, th- it's, <laughs> it's well, so silly. V- Vin was Mister. I'm not going to do sequels back in 2001. Mm-hmm. Was he? And then in 2009, yeah. when Money Calls, he's like, yeah, I'll do sequels. <laughs> And that's all he does now. Hasn't he done a sequel to everything except the pacifier? Um, I mean, I don't think I don't think everything, but he's done a fair amount of sequels. Yes. Riddick, Triple X, Guardians of the Galaxy, Fast and the Furious. I feel like I he know. did a 12 Angry Men adaptation. I don't think he did a sequel to that. <laughs> did he play all 12 men? No, he was just one of the men. <laughs> um, OK, they re they went to like this team of like uh, engineers that are working on like rocket cars or something like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. they're from fast three. Yeah, Zach, you're not going to know who those guys are. You got this. No, I didn't need to. You got the sense that we've seen them before. And this is a reunion. D- two you know of them I mean? we've seen before. L- Lucas Black, the guy who sh- has a huge forehead and should never smile. He was in Tokyo Drift. And then Bow Wow, little Bow Wow, was in Tokyo Drift. And okay. I, don't think that th- I don't think that third guy was in Tokyo Drift. The quantum physicist, the rocket scientist guy? Yeah. He was fantastic. I loved him. Yeah, yeah. And he's not, he's he's new to the franchise. Okay, he was great. He was fantastic. Okay. I want, I want, I want him in, in every Fast and Furious movie. <laughs> uh, who is it? Um, Dom's girlfriend, is it? Wife? Wife, Letty. Letty. She does very little except look concerned all the time. She had some great action in this movie with the motorcycle and... The uh, car stunts in the jungle. She yeah, great. yeah. She, I, I like seeing her her work doing her motorcycle work at the beginning. And yeah, in she's a couple of weeks ago, she was doing martial arts with Ronda Rousey. She fought Ronda Rousey. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Dom's sister. What's her name? Jordana Brewster. Mia. Mia. Yeah. She is great. She's awesome. Is she? She's uh, yeah, <laughs> but she always looks like she just stepped off of like like the set of Friends. And with her stylist, like she's she's like standing there with like good hair. That's like her main <laughs> role in this film. <laughs> well, OK, so to to give her and, her and her character credit, her character's husband, the actor who played a, 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 a Paul Walker died. So they kind of stopped using her for a while because they're because, you know, in in this universe, Paul Walker's character, Brian, st- is, he's still alive and they keep they keep referencing him. Referencing why is him. he's still alive. If, I, like, I don't why know. Why keep him going? I but heard he's going to be in the next movie. He you know, it's uh, they keep pushing that. Um, <laughs> so so like anyway, that I'm glad they were able to bring her back because they kept like for a couple movies. They were like, Brian and me are gone. They, they've retired. They have a family now even though other people have families. And I, w- I kind of felt bad for Jordana, Jordana Brewster that she was written out of this series because her the the actor who played her husband in the series died. So like, well, okay. she can't be in any way. So I'm glad they brought her back in. Okay. Even if it was ham-fisted. And final one, 
Who is the woman that's like a hacker and drives the car? Ramsey. Ramsey. She, she is fantastic. I love her. She is <laughs> a superstar. She is the, oh, is she? Okay. She's, her and Luda are the best things in this movie. They are fantastic. Um, any scene they're in, I'm enjoying quite a bit. R- Ramsey does my very specific movie pet peeve, though. The, yeah, the driving stick when you don't know how to drive stick. Yes, yes. <laughs> where, where she's like, I don't know how to drive. And then she can like masterfully drive, n- 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 not just a car, a stick shift car, a truck that she can like maneuver through tight. To, was it London Corners? Edinburgh. Or Edinburgh, where they were in. Right. Let alone she's never driven before. She shouldn't be able to drive like that and a stick at this at the same time. Impossible. Hold on. No, hold on. Hold on. This is the that movie that you do that in. This is everything that they do is impossible and silly. Uh, this should not be a pet peeve for you in this movie. Otherwise, you can't enjoy anything. No. You know what I love about these movies? The softest place you can land in these movies is on a car. <laughs> yeah <laughs> like there were multiple times where a character was flung through the air at like 80 90 miles per hour they were going to hit the highway and then dom would like push a car in front of them so they would land on the hood of the car like like it was a crash pad of the softest pillows I yeah like, I, the, the central like um cool innovation in all in like kind of the uh set pieces is that they had this electromagnet in their cars and so they could turn it on and uh, magnetize everything uh, towards it and then turn it the other way and magnetize everything away and like <laughs> so they have two of them di- driving down the street next to each other just like causing havoc around them to the bad guys following them but seemingly unaffecting each other at all <laughs> like w- not whatsoever was like if you know anything about magnets uh you put two <laughs> strong ones next to each other if it's gonna affect anything it, yeah. it, it would probably affect each other right mm-hmm. Uh, so so if your problem is uh her driving stick too well i you know i don't know how you watch this movie <laughs> no be, because this movie obsesses about how good of a driver are you right driving is the central part of this movie so the fact that she's not a good driver she says i'm not a good driver and all of a sudden she's a good driver Mm-mm. that, that, that hmm. doesn't follow the logic of the fast and furious series now, the the magnets and the fact that like no one gets murdered as those magnets drive down the street and suck everything out of every window. Oh no! Everyone is getting murdered. There's yeah. a high body count in this yeah. movie. Meg, but wait, it's PG thirteen, so you can't have body counts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dom just left his son. <laughs> <laughs> like in the first scene of the movie with Brian, with Brian. Yeah, Brian. say that like an hour later like <laughs> you do not know that then it's just his wife leaves early in the morning he was going to stay with his son and then he's like has a change of mind and then he shows up at the airport and then like an hour later they say like Brian's watching him and it's like <laughs> well how did that work you called Brian and like left and then Brian was going to fly in and show up later that day no, like it, Brian drives it he doesn't fly in <laughs> and, and Brian's like, "Hey, honey, uh, go go help your brother. I'll watch the kids." See, that's why I don't agree with Jordana Brewster coming back. She never really had a role in the family besides being Paul Walker's better half woman. And she's Dom's sister. Well, yeah, she's Dom's sister, but she doesn't have. She's not a hacker. She's not. A, she can drive a car. Period. Like that's all she does. I mean, but all this, of a sudden in this movie, yeah. she can control traffic and do all these other things, and you're like, "Where did this come from?" Okay, yeah, and, and she, then she yeah, she was kicking butt in the in the uh, in the girl fight at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, she could fight apparently. But but again, <laughs> they, they, all in this movie, they've def, they've definitely brought her back to kind of reinvent her and give her her own capabilities. Yes, and not just be Brian's wife anymore. <laughs> this movie was the reunion tour. We saw people from all yeah. the way back to one. Mm-hmm. No, maybe three. no. But yeah, no. Vince came back. Was Vince was in? No, wait, no. Was no. Vince was in five? Five. <laughs> it all blows. Right. We did not see anyone from one. But we saw um, people from three. Three on. Yeah. Two on. Here, here's yeah, one Tyrese. one more thing I want to say about this film. Okay. And this is maybe how this film is the most subversive, and it gives me maybe the worst taste of my mouth for like the whole franchise is if if Vin Diesel wants to leave one cultural legacy with this franchise, it is this idea of family. 
right? It's a, the, that like how important family is like the loyalty to family is like so important and you can like create a new family, choose a family, family. It's just like, if, if there's anything he wants to tell the world, it's that like the importance of family and machismo. <laughs> and like this movie shows us that this guy who has been preaching family, his whole franchise it, it just gave up on his family so quickly, so fast. <laughs> With his brother? Yeah. Like his family, he just had zero loyalty to his family. And they just picked a new family. Like it's just, it's so, it's so sub- subversive to like, I feel like the theme of Fast and the Furious. Yeah, but Dom has been like that. Like he, he did give up on his brother, but instead of like, uh, really going after his brother, they raced and he told his brother to leave and never come back. You know what I mean? Like, that's what he does with people he doesn't agree with in the family. He doesn't like do anything to them, he just intimidates them to leave, basically. Because that's the nice he'll thing, he'll cut you do. out, but he's not gonna kill you, right? So, so he won't. So, family for him is like you get one chance, and if you mess up, I'll give you a chance to leave and never see you again. That that's that's what it means. It's yeah, not like I, I'm gonna give you a chance to redeem yourself until I realize that I was wrong and totally misread the situation. <laughs> a movie or two later, or maybe in the same movie, <laughs> or at the end of the same movie. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. I mean, this is I a pattern you. with him for sure that started okay. way before F nine. I would say. Well, him, it goes like, all the way back to the, f- the first one with uh, yeah. with Brian, right? right? He trusts Brian, and then they obviously Brian turns on him, but then by like the fifth movie, they're all cool again. <laughs> But Even in the first blood, movie, though. by the end of the first movie, he realizes that Brian's like, he's a cop, but he's not really gonna go after him. You know what I mean? Like, he accepts him at the end of the first movie. What's that great... I, I can't remember which, which, which one it's in, but maybe it's this one. Um, but I think he's, he's talking with Jordana Brewster, so it must be before, before Paul Walker died. And then Paul Walker is like, yeah, I'm the good guy, pretending to be the bad guy. And then Jordana Brewster's like, maybe you're always the bad guy, pretending to be the good guy. He was like, mm-hmm. oh. <laughs> that was back before they just mad libbed these scripts. Because yeah. Because <laughs> there were there were a couple scenes in this movie where I was like, this dial what, there's a scene where Letty and Mia are having uh noodles in Japan, I believe. <laughs> the noodles, yeah. <laughs> and they're literally talking to each other in catchphrases. Yep. Like, like there's no genuine dialogue between these two characters. They're just like bouncing these phrases that have been passed movie for movie back and forth between each other. And then uh, and then they see a Mexican flag in the window and it means something somehow. I don't know. It, so I've been to the postcard. I've which... been to Tokyo mm-hmm. and I can tell you as one of the world's largest cities, uh, you'd be hard pressed to find a noodle shop sit at it and see a flag of one of your friends <laughs> from where you're eating dinner. <laughs> yeah. At random, you mean? Yeah. Me- Me- Megan, what, why was the Mexican flag important? Well, we can't talk about that. No, the, it's in the trailer. It's not a spoiler. Oh, the it's Mexican not a spoiler? flag oh, it's, is a part of the trailer? No, the, 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 the person connected to the Mexican flag is clearly in the trailer. Like, the it, person oh, okay. connected to the Mexican flag always said that like Tokyo was his Mexico or something like that. <laughs> no, he sent Dom a postcard from Mexico City the day that he died. died. Right. But the- and that's why they went to Tokyo. And then so the Mexican flag was like, oh, Dom, uh, no, well, Han must be up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he had made Actually. a comment, something about how like a lot of people go to Mexico. I go to Tokyo or something like that. Hmm. hmm. And I honestly, I can't remember if he actually says that at some point in the series or if they just decided in F9. That's what he said. <laughs> I think at the end. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I wish I could remember. This is not important either, but I, I was kind of distracted that they, that Dom named his kid Brian. It was like an homage to them, to him though. No, I get so it. It kind of made but in sense. A, in a world where Brian's still alive. It's still alive. Okay. You're gonna name your nope. kid after your friend. Well, it's because he like, wasn't weird. gonna see Brian, so he's like, "You're my new Brian." <laughs> I know, but, but that is well, that's that's not. But he good. lives close enough to babysit. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think he did though. 
I think they like moved on. (laughs) Mia and Brian and their kids were just like, peace out. We're not part of this life. So how long was his son alone in the house for when (laughs) Dom left at the beginning of the movie? I imagine he called a nanny or a babysitter, (laughs) dropped him off with, you know, a lady in town or something. (laughs) Another brother we'll learn about in the next movie with babysitting. (laughs) Okay, I was kind of so a- like having just rewatched all of them. I, it was nice to see the guy from Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. L- L- Lucas Black or Han? Uh, Lucas Black. Oh, really? The, the main character from that movie. <laughs> but I just, Sean. His name's Sean, I think. If you're going to have him in there, why are you going to like make him completely goofy and... Like I he like normally when they pull people in from the past they like give him a real reason to be there and they absolutely gave him a, a stupid reason to be there. <laughs> like all of a sudden he's a gadget man working with a rocket scientist. Literally <laughs> has <laughs> nothing related to Tokyo Drift. No, he's like yeah. an eighteen year old in Tokyo Drift. Right, Was- which. Happened like four years ago in <laughs> timeline. In the so timeline. he's like 22 years old now and, and a gadget guy. Right. Was anyone else thinking when the scenes with Cypher in that glass box were on? Just thinking about how she goes to the bathroom. Where's the bathroom? Yes, where's, where's the, the, where's the, the bed? <laughs> yeah, or the bed or anything. Yeah. No I think chair. she changes clothes at some point. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I think that means John Cena is kind of sick. He's like, yeah, you're going to live in that glass house. <laughs> Uh, I have a question being... about the Go son ahead. Brian. Okay. Would it have been better or worse if they had named the kid Paul? Better. 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 E- e- even though it was like, like kind of like a wink to the re- to way our better. world. Okay. Way you think better. of it should have been Paul instead of Brian. Yes. Okay. Okay. For sure. You should yeah. write these movies. Definitely. Well, so speaking of writer, they've had the same writer from like number three or four four until eight and then he was not back for nine and i wonder if there if that's one reason why this is maybe not as successful as you know the run that was f- four five six seven eight which had their ups and downs but that was a pretty solid run of this franchise yeah and i think eight was a success off the back of seven more than anything yeah i don't think i personally don't think eight is a good movie i think seven is not a great movie either but it's at least feels like it fits with five and six as kind of a trilogy across those like i kind of see the like the first two as separate movies the third one as a spinoff the fourth one as a reset five six and seven as a tight trilogy and i don't know what we're doing anymore with eight and nine (laughs) other than just extending things for no reason whatsoever (laughs) I just feel like this movie was missing the rock or that role Mm -hmm. that wasn't filled by John Cena. He didn't, Mm -hmm. Dom didn't have anybody to play off of. Yeah. So instead we got, we got flashbacks from 1989 Mm -hmm. that were kind of pointless other than to give John Cena a reason to be there. He didn't have any reason being there. Yeah. Or to establish that Vin Diesel's height is uh, arbitrary. Yeah, uh, yeah that, that really bothered me that that Dom was like a good six inches taller than his brother in the flashbacks. And in real and then you, you see them together and John Cena is clearly ta- taller than Vin Diesel. Mm-hmm. He had a late girl's yeah. bird. He was, he was a late bloomer. Late bloomer. Yeah. He was a scrawny and, little kid. And they have they give uh, uh, Cypher this throwaway line about like genetic makeup. Oh, just <laughs> explain how they look nothing alike. Thank goodness. <laughs> I was lost. <laughs> like, let's just make her racist in order to explain let's away racist, yeah. why they don't look at all like each other. I'm a hacker line, and a white supremacist. Yeah. The line was like mixed bloodlines. Yeah. 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 Like, oh, I know they really, there was like some Nordic line in your, I'm like, <laughs> are you Nordic enough for this family? Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's, um, let's, do like a quick ranking and then we'll jump into spoilers so we can talk openly about the rest. But I think most people who are listening have gotten a vibe of what our general thoughts are on it. Um, I will give this movie like a two probably. And it's more ranked against other fast and furious movies. Like we've had nine others. I think that's a 
decent bar to rank against. And I would say this is a less than average movie when it comes to Fast and Furious movies for my tastes. What do you guys say? I give it a 2.5. It was fine. I I give this a three stars. Um, there's a lot I didn't like, but we did not really mention that the stunts are still pretty great in this movie and the set pieces are still pretty awesome. We can talk about so, it in spoilers. <laughs> we'll talk about it, but it, it's I still overall enjoyed my experience, even if the fourth or fifth flashback was a bit too much. Sure. Zach? Uh, two and a half for me. Nice. A two, two and a half, and a, a two, two, two and a half, and a three for F9. We are talking spoilers now for F9, as well as the rest of the Fast and Furious franchise. So if you haven't seen F9, you want to stay spoiler free, don't listen to this. Uh, although you probably can. It'll be fine by the time you get around to seeing it. Uh, or if you want to stay spoiler free for the Fast and Furious franchise, I'd be shocked if you were listening to this, if you if that was the case. But uh, <laughs> listen, listen on or don't. You're warned from here on out. So... Um, we didn't talk much of like specifics about the action scenes. And that's why uh, that's because I personally think some of the action scenes, like even descriptions of the act, the movie doesn't have much to offer other than the action scenes. That's my yeah. feeling. <laughs> and so if you spoil the fact that there's a, a, a car swing in this movie, <laughs> which was awesome. That car swing was physics wise. It made no sense. And that car swing slammed them into this edge of a cliffside. Like they should have been dead. Well, that was the first time of many they should have died. But the fact that their way to get across like an Indiana Jones Temple of Doom style chasm was to <laughs> somehow latch onto a rope. I loved it. That That's bridge, the silliness I love. They were on a rope bridge that gets cut at one end. Okay. So now the bridge is in free fall. Yes. <laughs> you can't have traction on something in free fall. You're not going to be able to press against it in order to drive up a bridge in free fall. There's no friction whatsoever. You are both <laughs> falling, but they literally are driving along this bridge as it's falling. And then it's like pretty much vertical and they're still driving up it. And again, there's no traction whatsoever. It's in free fall and they drive up the bridge and it's just like, okay, so this is what it's going to be. It's, it's Looney Tune physics. It yeah. is Looney Tune physics. If you don't look down, you're not going to fall. Yeah. I think for me, when it came to this movie, uh, and they do this a little bit in eight, and there's some in seven. There's some in all of them. But there's definitely like a balance that works for me between the Looney Tunes action, the sappy dialogue, and something that's somewhere more in the middle, like the Mission Impossible movies, I would say. And I think Fast Five nails that perfectly for me and six is kind of an, ex an extension of fast five a little it's less, very close yeah a little less surprising i think fast five was surprising to most people they didn't expect that out of the series and then in seven it's diminishing returns but as of eight and into nine i feel like it's just it's just a cartoon at this point to me. Like even the dramatic scenes are cartoon level stupid. And um, <laughs> it just has lost anything as far as like anything interesting to chew on in those moments other than how ridiculous can we be with this stuff. And there... Um, some people might enjoy that. I don't dislike it. I wasn't hating my experience watching it. I just feel like when they had kind of that five, six, and seven sweet spot, they had something that was unique, right? It was like uniquely theirs. And they had made the transition from this relatively small indie action thing about the subculture that people knew about but had never been depicted on the screen. And they had evolved it into this like inclusive action version of that, that still had elements of that old thing that it started as, but also incorporated like modern filmmaking and big action. And it was just an interesting transition. I'm not sure the transition to what we have now in 
eight and nine and parts of seven are as interesting. Like how silly can we get? How crazy can we get? Is that interesting? I don't know. It's not to me, (laughs) but I don't like CG. I don't like transformers movies either. The plots suck in those. And they're like, how ridiculous can we get? It's getting to that level with me, with these movies where it's like, I need something to be realistic here or else why do I care about it? It's just a, a CG reel at some point. Um, I felt like Hobbs and Shaw had a lot of CG in it, but there was something there in that movie that kept me reeled in. And uh, yeah, this one, it's, it's spoiler. They go to space. I mean, come on. I, I get it. It's supposed to be stupid. It's supposed to be silly. But there is a line uh, for me <laughs> where you're just kind of like, and they obviously know it's stupid, right? Because they're they, literally making jokes. Of, in this, this is by far the most self-aware Fast and Furious movie. Oh, for for sure. I mean, the space thing, people have been joking like, where are they going next? Space. So you know that they're like, well, everyone's expecting us. We might as well do it. And, and there's do all, it in and there's the a silliest whole, way. There's a whole scene with uh, Tyrese and Ludacris where they're talking about being immortal and they're making references to like all the things they've survived. And, you know, there's just there's all kinds of self-awareness going on. And I'm glad that's there because if it wasn't, we'd really be scratching our heads about some of these decisions. Um, But it just, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Not sure there's much left in the engine for me engine much left in the gas tank for me with this your, your nose is, is running low on this move this year franchise yeah I think can so. i can i just ask a basic fast and furious question yeah okay. yeah um from what i've gathered in these movies is it just whoever waits the longest to do the nos or shift gears wins like yes it, you just have to do it last meg it's, it it me? seems like they're always like, um, oh, he did it too early. And then right before you, they do it, you know, and then they win. They pull ahead right at the end. But they're doing the same thing. Why is going too early a bad thing? Because then you run out of NOS before you get to the finish line. And so then the other use, person can just push their NOS and get over the finish line. So before you've used you do. 100% of your NOS and they've used some of their NOS and they win. No, NOS is like your turbo boost. Let, let, like, yeah. like you're playing a video game, you hit turbo. You only have so much turbo. Great. And so you've it, used all of it, and they've only used part of it because they're still using it as they cross the finish line. They, you, yes. If you use it too early, it's like you get your turbo boost, and then you run out of your turbo, so you're going to start slowing speed. down. Right. So then the other person, they can time it right where they can get the maximum NOS, so it runs out maybe just as they cross the finish line. It's like uh, like like when you're when you're running to first base in baseball, you don't slow down for first base. You have to run through first base, right? Dom just knows how to use his nos to run through first base. Uh, I can't. I mean, I I don't know. <laughs> also, that is, that is how it apparently works, <laughs> over yeah. and over and over in races, whoever hits the nos last wins. <laughs> You also can like upshift eleven times on your car. That's yeah. the other thing. That's <laughs> it's yeah yeah yeah. It's like if you can go sixty miles an hour, but for ten seconds you can go a hundred miles an hour. Mm-hmm. Why does it matter when you pick those ten seconds? Because what if it's like twelve seconds before you get to the finish line, and then you're not there in the last two seconds? That's fine. You're already you're way ahead of the other guy. Because yeah, he didn't the other guy waited yet. until eight seconds, and so his ten seconds is delayed, and then he gets there first. <laughs> I, I want to go back to school, become a math teacher, and I'm gonna give only <laughs> like relevant math questions in Fast and Furious <laughs> terms. Yes. Scenarios. I want to be in that math class. <laughs> like, if Dom can only turn left, and Brian's can only turn left also, and they're on the inside track, who will travel farther? Like, you can do calculus with Fast and Furious. Physics. Yeah, yeah there, there's there is so much you could teach. What is yeah. magnets? Is that... <laughs> physics. physics. Physics, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, Zach, I don't know, how, so I don't know how, to, how to describe this to you. You have 10 seconds. We're playing Mario Kart, right? <laughs> yeah. You have 10 seconds of turbo. We're going the same speed. Okay. Great. 
there we are 15 seconds from the finish line great okay you hit your turbo 15 seconds from the finish line perfect so now i'm way ahead of you and we have five seconds left and you're way behind i'm not way behind yeah because you didn't use your turbo and i did okay so so then i use my turbo great so now you catch up Uh uh-uh but but now no because (laughs) you are now like in the last five seconds you are now de de accelerating back to your back to 60 Let, let's say you were at 60 it took you to 100 now for your last five seconds Great. you're de-accelerating you're not going to hit 60 you're going back down for Perfect. those last five seconds i'm still going my max speed so i get to doesn't matter it, I, well no because the entire time that i'm using my nos you're going 60 right so yeah. whether i'm the whole time I'm decelerating from 100 to 60, that's still faster than the 60 you were going when I wasn't using my NOS. But my like even ex- my acceleration to 100 is faster than your deceleration. I already to 60. did the acceleration to 100. I did the exact same <laughs> thing you did. I've just already done it. It's like uh, I'm I'm your future, so I would get there first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I, obviously, we need to buy the same car, put NOS in them, <laughs> and test this for ourselves. That's the only solution I can think to this. <laughs> Mythbusters. Yeah, Mythbusters. We got to yeah. get them on it. Um, uh, other spoiler things. Han coming back. What, did you guys buy that backstory that they presented? Oh, my God. <laughs> I feel like Tokyo Drift just shouldn't exist because they've had to re-explain so many things and backtrack and say oh wait no he did die no he didn't die Mm -hmm. i just i hated tokyo drift (laughs) i like i'm fine with them bringing han back because that's what happens in this series people get these are soap operas they get amnesia they bring people back good guys become bad guys vice versa um but there was no explanation whatsoever all we heard was oh that's right that's the other scene with with kurt russell Mm -hmm. right like we know that i thought maybe statham was in on it i'm like fine they're they're gonna rewrite statham's character so he was in on the whole thing which he wasn't he thought he was killing han and all all kurt russell says was oh it was a magic trick but that's it like we don't understand how does han go from a burning exploding car to being a block away and alive Mm -hmm. the only good thing about tokyo drift is that han was introduced period Mm -hmm. like he could have been introduced in two or four and all of this would have been just like sure he doesn't come back till till five right or does he come back in four i don't remember he's in he's in briefly in four okay and then we see him in five, six, and then the end of six is the end of Tokyo Drift. Right. So he dies again in the end of six. Right. But it's all implied at the end of six, right? No, they, they show the they show the final um, they reshot or they show the ending of Tokyo Drift and then they add a scene with Statham like over Han's burning car, making a phone call to Dom. Uh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Um, I just watched it, but I don't remember that. <laughs> the, 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 these really do all bleed together. So it, it's totally do. fine. Yeah. I do have a, uh, a challenge for one of you, whoever mm-hmm. wants to step up and take the mantle. Um, this is a doable challenge. Uh, who is game for a doable fast and the furious challenge? I think the guest should do it. What's the challenge? challenge? <laughs> okay. Megan, this is it. I just w- and you can't look at things, okay? I just want to know the title of these movies in release order. <laughs> oh. <laughs> if, okay. if you get if you can't figure it out, I will I will jump in. We'll we'll team mark this. Okay. I just look them all up and I'm going to cover it right now. Okay. <laughs> The Fast, The Furious, no. number one. You forgot something. The Fast. And yes. The Furious. Yep. Yeah. Is this punctuation as well? No punctuation, but she does have to get all the words. Gotcha. Too Fast, Too Furious. Yeah. Yep. The dumbest of the titles. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> Fast and Furious, Three Tokyo Drift. Close the Fast and the Furious. 
mm-hmm. it matters because this movie titles things with those and no those. <laughs> is it four that is Fast and Furious? Yep. Yeah. Fast five. Yep. Fast and Furious six. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Fast and Furious seven. Mm-mm. No. Oh. Furious seven. Furious seven. Yeah. Fast eight. No, no. the best of the titles. The worst of the titles. The f- <laughs> fate. The fate of the furious. Yeah. That's that's that the best one. I it's wish not. I wish instead of them spelling the word fate, it would just be F eight of the furious. That would well, be that, amazing. That's what they do with the next one. So why did they? <laughs> the, the fate and the furious colon or no presents Hobbs and Shaw. It's fast and furious. Oh my God. Presents <laughs> presents and Hobbs and Shaw. F nine. Yeah. The saga. Yeah. Well, because because fanine is not a word. That's why Fnine. <laughs> fate's the actual word. The fast saga. Sorry. Yeah. All right, Megan, you did admirable, but not perfect. Admirable. I'm not a super fan. I don't have them memorized. Sorry. <laughs> you nearly got there. You did better than I probably would. <laughs> for sure. Anything else spoiler related we want to talk about? I, I just want to mis mention quickly. You kind of mentioned this, James. Um, mm. I liked Tyrese and Tej as like these Rosencrantz and Gillerstern of this series mm. of like questioning the nature of their existence and, you know, observing the world around them. Um, I, I know I, I kind of got that vibe from them. And I would be completely fine if like we get to the final movie and this is all some fever dream in Dom Toretto's head. <laughs> uh sure well pretty soon they're gonna start fighting predator (laughs) (laughs) yeah right it's fast and furious versus predator yeah f and fvp or we find out all of this is a prequel to uh pitch black or something yeah (laughs) yeah that's right (laughs) he takes on the name riddick all right um i will say i do not want to see cg paul walker come back no oh you will I don't want them to ever say the word Brian again in these movies. I don't need constant references to Brian. No. And and like in this movie, you could tell they're testing the water because we even see him pull up in his blue skyline at the end. Or we we see his car pull up. Oh, we don't. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Remember, they're they're all at the uh, because all these movies end with a family barbecue get together. Yeah. And someone figured that was John Cena. No, someone's like, where's Brian? Like, oh, he'll be here. And all of a sudden it cuts to, he always, drew, dr- he always drove like a blue Nissan Skyline. So and John Cena doesn't Brian. come to the family barbecue? I thought he was already there. I don't remember if he was there or not. But it, it was definitely Paul Walker's, it was definitely Brian O'Connor's car <sighs> pulling up to the family barbecue in that blue, that blue Nissan. I don't think John Cena's there because John Cena's on the run. Because he's like a oh. a spy who defected. <sighs> but I by the way, how did he become a super spy? Aren't like, they all? Aren't they all on the run? No, like, not didn't, no didn't Dom they, break out of jail or something at one point? <laughs> well, they but they work with the Mister Nobody with the go, who's the government, so they're kind of yeah. like under this umbrella. They, they work for the government they, now. <laughs> yeah, they were being hunted by um, uh, the Rock in Number Five. And then number six, he's like, yeah, you guys are cool. Oh, that's right. Number six, he then calls them and, and the Rock says, like, I, I got the team for this job. Right. Like yeah, five I, to six is the transition from heist movie to superhero crime fighters. But that I think that's why five works so well, though, is you still had like the heist angle, like the, the scene with the safe everybody points to in five yeah. is like silly. It's silly. You can't drag a safe through, you know, the streets of Toronto or wherever they were. Uh, Rio. Whatever. And <laughs> like, I, I get it. show you Christ the Redeemer like eight times in that movie. <laughs> just in case sure. you're not sure. It's not the with, CN Tower. With Dom's face on it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I feel like the magnet scene in F9 is similar, right? It's Which silly. One? It wouldn't really the magnet scene where they're going through the street. All the magnet scenes, I guess. I say all, that's of all of them. <laughs> yeah, all, all the magnet scenes that involve cars were okay. probably the moments that I enjoyed the most in the movie because it was silly but clever and kind of inventive things to do with cars. And it was mm-hmm. a decent mix of like CG and practical. Like it was kind of hard to tell when something was CG and when something was practical. Uh, 
And so those are the moments that I think I like out of the series is when it's okay to do something that's like not really possible, but let's keep it within the realm (laughs) of the, you know, just over the edge, not diving head first over the edge. Like in the, in, uh, in a previous movie, Dom and, uh, uh, Brian jump out of a convertible into a lake, right? That's also in five. Okay. In five. (laughs) In this movie, instead of something inventive like that, that is somewhat within the realm of possibility, you get somehow uh, a whip lodges itself under the wheel well, and then he swings onto a ledge through a car swing. It's fine. It was silly. It was fun. But it's just so far past anything even remotely believable uh, that it just, yeah, it, it got uh, it got too silly for me. I feel like I'm repeating that too much. But um, <laughs> <laughs> James, do you find this movie silly? I do. I do. Okay. I definitely do. Uh, but were you entertained why, why, though? Why can't you just write something where it's like, oh, Letty and Dom are so smart, they anticipated something like this, and they jump out with parachutes. You know what I mean? Like there, there are ways to do this and still have it be fun and maybe give some characterization around the action as opposed to the, whatever the whip swing was, uh, which, which I guess was pure luck, right? It's not like he shot something out of the car. It's just something happened to whip underneath the car at the right angle. Right. No, no, he, I mean, I think he read the situation. Like he could, he improvised (laughs) and he's like, okay, I can, I can stick this bridge onto my, onto my wheel. Well, and they'll swing me across most likely. And then detach. Then they'll detach. I keep driving. Yeah. He did. He hold on a second. At that point, he lands on the other side. And then the scene just cuts. But like, are they being followed by a helicopter? No, no, that was a border between two countries. Oh, okay. And and yes. Okay. And and here's the other thing is like. They're running from this whatever country they're running from the military. As in, like, that country's military are the bad guys, and these people are invaders who are, like, you know, mm-hmm. trying to recover a crash plane on sovereign soil. Yeah. And they're in the wrong for being the military and protecting their country from... Yeah. I think and, two and more... So, Go ahead. Sometimes you watch these movies, and you're like, wait, who's the actual bad guy in this situation? Is it the German police protecting a base or is it the people robbing the, the base? Well, if, if I know anything, I know that in somewhere in Fast 10, part one or part two, Charlize Theron is going to team up with them. <laughs> There's going to be some <laughs> bigger bad guy and Charlize Theron is going to be turned into a good guy momentarily, just like <laughs> every other bad guy in this series has done. Now, oh, I, I do like her. Um, her I do like the cut? mom. Uh, oh, Helen Mirren. Yeah, Helen Mirren's good. She's fun. Say that again. She's fun. Yeah, she was fun. Yeah. I I heard Charlize Theron say that she will not become a good guy in the series. She wants. And now I know she's not the writer. I'm not sure how much sway she has over that, but. At least if she has it her way, she will stay a bad guy. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to pass up a giant paycheck if they say you got to uh, occasionally align with the good guys for a plot I mean, element. she's doing okay for herself. <laughs> what do you think she got paid for the one day she filmed? Oh, yeah. She's definitely movie? there no, for that's a the day. Other thing. <laughs> it was very obvious they didn't have her for more than a day. You're like, all right, 20 million. I need to get a bowl cut and stand in this box for a day. <laughs> I don't think she was ever in a two shot. I think yeah, she, she was only ever been. on the screen by herself ever. I. That's a great question. I don't I have to go. I'd have to go back and watch it again. Yeah, that's a great question. I'm sure if there was a two shot, it was CG. I imagine that she did not interact with any of the cast. All right, let's uh, okay. let's rank these movies. What do okay. you say? Yeah. Um, who wants to go first? Well, no, no. no. Uh, do we need let's, to briefly go through these movies at all? Yeah, let's talk about them one by one, and then we'll speed through rankings. Okay. One by one. 
So let's start with the first movie. Uh, fa- the Fast and the Furious. Any particular love for these? Did people watch them as they came out? Zach, have you seen this one? You got to tell us which ones, which are the ones you've seen. I haven't seen. I have seen this one. Yes, I've seen okay. this one. I remember they steal TV VCRs. Correct. Did they you see steal- this one came out, Meg? Oh, heck yeah. I was in <laughs> high school. And I had uh, just gotten my license, I believe. This is before mm-hmm. I even knew you. This is before we knew each other. Yeah. My love for Fast and Furious is longer than my love for you. Did you love, wait, wait, <laughs> did you love this franchise after seeing the first one? You're like, I can't wait for the next eight. I remember it was a late spring day, pretty warm, opened the sunroof in my car, driving way too fast home because I was just like, this is so fun. That was such a fun hmm. movie. Your Volvo? My Volvo, yes. <laughs> <laughs> My 1990 Volvo. Yeah. It Megan, was... Would you rather be married to this franchise as a person or <laughs> watch a movie of Kyle as a movie? <laughs> <laughs> what? That is the weirdest question I've ever heard. That is a very odd that. question. So um, your husband could be this per, the personification of this franchise or you can watch the two hour movie that Kyle has been turned into. I'd rather he's be not, married to the he's had, He hasn't been turned into a... <laughs> I love you, though. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. I thought she was fast and furious, apparently. <laughs> Why don't you go marry it? I will. She did. She did. She I did, did, apparently. Okay. I, did. Uh, I, I also right. saw this in the theater when it came out. And uh, me and my friends were attempted to drag race a, a, a an actual someone had like a Japanese import tuned up car next to us afterwards on um, Mineral Point Road and we were driving a Zuza Rodeo. <laughs> they won. <laughs> nice. I saw in the theaters as well. I think I've seen all these in the theaters when they came out. Um, and I like this one. I thought at the time like there was there's lots of CG in this. Like I I don't like that they dropped like the whole like flying through the car and stuff like that. I I like that stuff from the earlier movies. Ooh, they I pretty much dropped all of that. When um, we get to Yeah, I it's this one has CG. I I don't really care for the whole car culture of it all. Like I never mm-hmm. cared about you know tuned up cars and they kind of drop they kind of drop that, like the whole idea of like you can modify your your imports. They, it's it's less about, it's more just about like a car and not the whole like car mod modding culture like these earlier movies were. Less street racing and more like cars are a mean to an end, but they Absolutely. should be fun and fast. Yeah, I mean, yeah, by it, the by the time you get to these later movies, it's more about Dom driving around in his version of the Batmobile or something. Right. <laughs> it, I mean, if it can't be done in a car, then it just can't be done. All right. That that's the that's the logic of these series. So the first one is a moderate hit, especially considering the budget, and then uh, they decide they're going to make another one, but Vin Diesel doesn't want to do it, so Paul Walker does it without him. And they bring in Tyrese to kind of play opposite him. And we get Too Fast, Too Furious. Which also has Ludacris in it. It does, yeah. First yep. appearance of him, right? No, you seen the first one? I don't remember. No, no. Uh, Jerules in the first one. <laughs> That's who it is. Yeah. What happened with that? They just decided we're switching up the rapper. We're going to put in this. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure Jerule probably wanted too much money or... Maybe Ludacris was a bigger star than Jerule at that point. So, yeah, because right, the the third one I'm gonna have the, th- the third one they do little bow wow. So for, for a while they sh- they seem to be doing like who's the rapper of the moments in each of these movies. Mm-hmm. You keep saying Jerule. Is it is it Jerule? Ja. I thought it was Jaw Rule. Jaw Rule. Is it? Am I saying Jerule? Jaw ja Rule. Sorry, my apologies, <laughs> Mister Rule. I didn't mean to mess up your name. <laughs> or or Jaw, whatever you prefer. <laughs> Um, so too fast, too furious. The only good thing about this is the introduction of Tyrese and of Tej, uh, Ludacris. And this movie is way too much of the CG, way too much of the zooming in and out of cars. Like everything I don't like about the franchise happens in too fast, too furious. This one felt the most dated to me. And it, like, it really just felt like a product of the early two thousands. Um, I, I found it forgettable. I can't tell you anything that happens in this movie. 
except that Paul Walker and Tyrese and Ludacris are in it. And I, um, I, I like this movie a lot. I totally disagree. I enjoy totally this movie. Totally fine. Yeah. Probably because it's v- very light on Dom. <laughs> like there's, there's, a no reference, Dom. there's no Dom. Yeah. There, there's yeah. a reference to him or two, but that's about it. Um, and I think, I think Tyrese is, uh, not f- in full comedy mode. Like he's, um, partially the comic relief, but also has actual things to do in the movie. Unlike these later ones where he's absolutely just the comic relief, uh, side characters. And, uh, the other thing this movie does is introduce the idea of doing a ridiculous thing with the car in that they jump off a, um, uh, a short pier onto a ship, a boat. Mm-hmm. They make a ridiculous Dukes of Hazard style jump. Like now, 100 miles per hour. Right. In context of what they're doing in five, six, seven, eight, nine, it's nothing. But it's the first time in the series where it's not just about street racing. It's about doing a big stunt. One that you literally cannot do in real life. But it's realistic enough that you're like, okay, maybe if you went fast enough and got the right incline maybe you could time that perfectly um okay part three literally nobody comes back they set it in tokyo it's borderline spinoff and they get a brand new cast going uh with a cameo from dom right at the end of it and you get the fast and furious colon tokyo drift this one I don't love just because it's kind of boring. I think my opinion of this one has been known. I don't like it. Only good thing about this one, Han, mm-hmm. Justin Lin, and I found the race scenes watchable because they're not doing a ton of the zooming in and out. It's actually like, like the street racing is shot well, but everything else about the movie is forgettable also. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen it. Haven't seen it. You're Zach fine. You, you you can. This is the Skip most it. skippable of all of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's probably true. Next up, we have Fast and Furious from 2009. This is kind of the reboot of the series where a bunch of people from previous movies all kind of come back and they reset a bunch of the characters. And there's a little more of the ridiculous action, but it's still, I'd say, pretty seeped in drama. Like it's it's still 50 50 drama and action and there it's still car stunts, a little bit of ridiculousness, but not way over the top constantly. Uh, isn't this and, the one where go ahead? Isn't this the one where Letty dies at the very beginning? Yes. OK, mm-hmm. so that's the Yeah, that's like the big drama is they Michelle Rodriguez has killed off. Mm-hmm. So well, just the fact that they brought her back, period. And they bring Mia back, and they br- they bring back everybody basically. Yeah, from the Brian's original. back. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. This is the one where they they have to compete to um, become drug runners to infiltrate a drug gang. Mm-hmm. Gal Gadot's in this one. Is that yep. her, that's her introduction to the series. Mm-hmm. For some yep. reason, she is just like incredibly attracted to Vin Diesel. Yeah, but she gets with Han eventually. Yeah, because 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 Vin Diesel, his, his real loves for Letty as much as Gal Gadot cannot keep her hands off of him. Right. Then you get the big one from 2011 Fast Five, which is the introduction of The Rock as a character in these movies as Lieutenant Hobbs. I don't remember what he is. Hobbs. Lieutenant Hobbs. He, he has a first name. What's his first name? Sure. Dan. <laughs> I don't know, but he's Luke. like a U.S. Luke Marshal. Hobbs. Or... It's Calvin. Luke. No, Hobbs. Luke. <laughs> yeah, Luke. Yeah. He's uh, would have been better if it was Calvin. He's some kind of U.S. Marshal who's tasked with hunting down the gang, something like that. And uh, other stuff happens oh, in the movie. That's right. <laughs> at, at the end of four, Dom goes to prison. Mm-hmm. And then at the beginning of five, Brian and Mia break Dom out of the prison bus in, in right. a stunt that should have killed everyone that prison bus because i don't think anyone gets strapped in on a bus at all <laughs> sure. no and it's rolling down the highway it right? rolls so many times um yeah and then that's yeah, right then, now they're on the run and luke hobbs is chasing them and we get the um does this also have this has the, the train heist at the beginning with the bridge jump 
Mm-hmm. And then yeah. also Vince, has Vince still in this one? Yeah, right. Vince is down in um Vince is in Rio. And this is also the introduction of Elsa Pataki, Elena, who is the father of mother. sorry, the mother of Vin Diesel's <laughs> child. Right. Later on. Because Letty's <laughs> out of the picture now. So he's right, gonna Letty's have, out. Right. have a love interest. Yep. Yeah. Then that brings us to 2013's Fast and Furious 6, which I'll be honest, don't have much memory of <laughs> personally. Uh, ha, ha. Is that a pun? Because Letty's back it, and she has amnesia. It is now, but it wasn't intended <laughs> to be one. <laughs> um, is amnesia yeah, a real thing? Yeah. I mean, she has movie amnesia. <laughs> right. But you can lose your memory due to a traumatic yeah. brain injury. And you can? Yeah, certainly. <laughs> certainly. You're very confident. Yeah, look it up. It's a real thing. Okay. So th- this has this has two movies worth of stunts that they put into one. And it has the tank on the highway scene, which has maybe the greatest stunt of the of the series, where Letty is ejected from a car on a highway. So Dom ejects himself from his own car to catch her midair, and then they land seamlessly on top of a car hood no problem (laughs) and this all happens at like 80 miles per hour um but it also has the airplane at the end which takes 18 minutes of runway before it can take off Mm -hmm. so long yeah yeah. it takes forever yeah it's also the demise of gal de go gal godot though that's right gal godot giselle dies in this one Mm -hmm. or does she we'll see i mean I don't know. Do you think they can? Af- I guess they could afford. They could afford um, Gal Gadot at this point. They can get for Charlize. Part- they can get Gal. For part ten, they can absolutely get her for a day. They can absolutely get her if they want to. Yep. <laughs> yep. She's the next bad explain. guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's hope not. Uh, Twenty fifteen brings us Furious Seven, which was the movie that they were filming when Paul Walker passed away, or mm-hmm. maybe they had filmed most of it. They were just doing pickups or something like that. Uh, I want to say they got, they were two thirds, three quarters through before he died. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Furious 7. I don't really remember what happens in Furious 7 other than they kind of do a wrap up at the end of it. It's the Decker one, right? Where it's a lot about Decker. God's eye. With Ramsey? With Ramsey. This is the introduction of Ramsey. And, yeah. And also Jason Statham makes his... Mm. I mean, he he makes a cameo in number six and he makes his full fledged appearance in number seven. Right. He's the main bad guy in seven. And they're all trying to get to Ramsey, who's a hacker. Correct. Yep. She's protected Um, by the team, basically. Yeah. And this all uh, the big stun in this was two. there's jumping cars between towers in (laughs) Dubai or UAE. I can't remember which, which place. And then there's also the Dubai. This is it Dubai? Okay, thank you. There's, there's this, also um, one's a city, one's a country. They're the is, same place. Is Dubai in okay, I, or, UAE? Yeah. My apologies. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, and then there's also the where the they drop cars out of a cargo plane because they have to get onto a highway. Oh, the parachute. The parachutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The I know. I know. Silly things in happen in this series before this, but the jumping from one building to another with the cars was the first time I was like, eh, this is too much for me. Or were you like, oh my God, that's so cool. No, I was like, <laughs> okay, this just got stupid. <laughs> I I kind of agree with you, James. Um, I I also felt, I, they, they were trying to rock in a hard place. Like Paul Walker had died. They had to finish the movie. So they, you know, they use his brother, they use footage from other movies. And I'll say right now, this one doesn't work as well for me as it does for other people. I know for some people, they think Seven's one of the best. And it's more in the middle just because. I don't know, I, I, I think that they were kind of, you know, again, darned if they did, darned if they did it. So I think Seven to me, I'd feel this is the same as Six generally. Like, it's pretty unmemorable to me, Mm -hmm. except for the ending, like the stuff that they did around Paul Walker's death that probably wasn't there until that happened. The kind of wrap up and the memory segment of the past movies, like they literally cut to like shots from previous movies for from the first one. Yeah. Stuff like that. Um, 
I I thought all of that worked way better than it ever should have <laughs> yeah. for me. It was like a nice little like, okay, this is maybe not the end of the series, but the end of this version of these movies that we're going to see. Um, and it might have been. They, although I feel like eight and nine are just like hangers on from seven. Uh, so Maggie shaking her head. This is a this is a pro eight household right here. Sure, Love eight. Mm, Love don't it. like eight. <laughs> Why not? Let's talk about it. <laughs> Number eight, The Fate of the Furious from 2017. What's there to love that I'm missing? Charlize. Um, there's the frozen lake whole thing. The submarine. The submarine. It's very Just, James Bond. I I was I honestly the lake thing silly, but not jump from building to building silly. So I was okay with it. <laughs> uh, Jason Statham rescuing a baby on an airplane and like murdering henchmen as this baby's in a baby carrier listening to Alvin the Chipmunks. But okay, by the way, <laughs> Statham he didn't bring a baby carrier onto that airplane because he like used some wingsuit. Mm-hmm. And that baby, because so uh, we we find out that um. Elena and Dom at some point Elena had Dom's baby before between when we thought Letty was dead and Letty was back alive, mm-hmm. and somehow Elena at the, the timeline gets a little fuzzier. People have tried to figure out how long it takes place between these movies. How old is this kid? Like, how's this all work? Um, anyway, so Elena is being held captive on Charlie Theron's airplane, which circles the earth continuously with Dom's child. And when Statham rescues Dom's child, because Elena gets killed, he has a car seat. Mm -hmm. He didn't bring the car seat. And I I assume this plane never lands. They never plan on putting this kid into a car. So where did the car seat come from? Well, a car seat, it's a very convenient place to put a kid because you can strap it down. Yeah, but they're on an... I mean, they're on an airplane circling the earth. This kid's a prisoner. Is it like yeah. in case of turbulence that we throw the kid? It's no, I think he's saying it's just sit. like a chair. Yeah, it's a chair at that point. It's it's perfect for that. What, you're going to just have him flopping around? No, you can give him an actual chair. No, you don't put a baby in a chair. Yeah, well, you, they have baby chairs that aren't car seats. <laughs> like, like, like a rock and play. Why not a rock and play? <laughs> Those are recalled, honey. <laughs> you're, not to, you're not supposed to let your baby sleep in the car seat either. I think, we never did it. <laughs> I think if I'm a bad guy and I've kidnapped a child that I need to keep alive, right? Because then I can't use it as blackmail. Uh, I'm finding a baby seat. How else do you yeah. transport a baby? It can lay down. It's strapped in. It'll fall asleep. Uh, you wouldn't put it in a chair. That would no, work. I, I, you can't lay down in a car seat. Yeah, of course you can. If you if you put it in the base and recline it, but where are they strapping that base to? It's that a ca- baby. A you chair. have a you have a child. It would think think back to babies. I'm thinking babies back to lay baby. down. Babies yeah. lay down in their car seats. <laughs> no, they don't lay down <laughs> in their car seats. They're position. reclines. Yeah, I can't believe we're arguing about but this. <laughs> they, there's a, a crib. recline is a lay down. There, there's a crib in that prison. Why not put the kid in the crib? Why put him in the car seat? I don't know. Just, exactly. You don't know. There, There is no reason. I didn't know there's a crib in there. There is no reason okay. there has to be a car seat on this airplane that is circling the world. How did the baby get kept... to the plane? Yeah, there's also a prison on this plane. I think they have enough forethought to have a, a baby seat. She may have had the baby built on a the prison plane. on it. No way. <laughs> she, she did not have, have that baby, baby on, the, on plane. the plane. We don't know how long she's on. See, this or the time like it's fuzzy. We don't know. We don't know when that baby was conceived because that's like four, three movies ago. Plus, uh, yeah, Dom is completely asexual. Can we all agree on that? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Uh, no, no. The, the, these movies are sexless. Like, no, no. They no? used to be sexy. Yeah, yeah. The, and in now the early days, they're not. Yeah, in the early did, days. Did you listen to that one podca- podcast that was like, "This is a twenty-year relationship where like Letty and Dom were like hot and heavy at the beginning, and then they kind of grew up, had a kid, and now they're just kind of like, you know, they have sex sometimes, but." <laughs> Wait, were they you hot and heavy before it. he went to prison for murder or after? Uh, they met so, after. They're no, like high school sweethearts. No, she, she's in the she's in the flashbacks. 
Oh, she mm-hmm. is? She is? Yeah, so th- th- they never reference it, but at one point you see three people standing there. One looks kind of like Letty, one looks like Jordana Brewster, and one is dressed like Vince from the first movie, like wearing the exact same clothes. Mm-hmm. So I'm pretty sure that was supposed to be those three characters. Y- y- you know, at- they're at the street race against um, the brother. So yeah, hmm. I feel like Letty's been in the picture forever. Okay. All right. Um, did we solve anything here? Or? No, we didn't. Yeah. <laughs> no, we still don't know we why didn't. there's a car seat on the plane. Um, no, eight is great. Eight is great. It's, the it's, only thing it I don't like about eight is the scene where they take control of all the cars, computers, and start like dropping them from parking garages and then like driving them around the city without people in them. I'm completely terrified of that because I think it's plausible. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I like about that scene. Not only that, but before the movie came out, I remember there was like uh, footage from the set leaked. You know, the cars that come out of the carports and they like drop a few stories. They did that for real. Like that's not CG. I'm sure some of it's CG, but they actually shot cars up the like side of a building and had them hit the ground from like several stories above. And so knowing that, even though it's silly, like especially the amount of cars they do it with because they didn't do that for real. Um, just the fact that they did that physically for some of the shots. I I loved it. I believed it. What When the submarine bursts through the ice and launches like three bad guy trucks 40 feet in the air, mm-hmm. they actually launched trucks 40 feet in the air. And then added a submarine sure. behind it. So like it's th- that's one of those great examples of like a good mix of practical and CG mm-hmm. where like like obviously we can't practically have a submarine do this. So we'll CG that. But we can actually have cars launching through the air and meld those two together. Yeah. I'm not sure you've convinced me that F8 is a good movie. It does have elements that are redeemable to it but i still it's not why in the past i've watched these like i the jason statham scene of him fighting in the on the airplane is fun but yeah. it's not why i watch fast and furious movies it it, it right it, it's not a car <laughs> they had a they had not a, a car and it has out nothing to do with the family it has nothing to do with anything it's just jason statham fighting in a movie no, he, can, it's he the, fights in all his movies. <laughs> it's the bad guy rescuing his nemesis, his baby. Like that's if that's a family right there. I don't know what is. And it's the yeah. dichotomy of going like, I'm going to shoot this guy, but and then I'm going to be like, Hey, baby, how's the Alvin and the Chipmunks? You doing okay? And then he goes boom, 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 and then back to <laughs> Alvin and the Chipmunks. It's it's cute and funny. Yeah, I'll agree. It's cute and funny. It's just not <laughs> enough to get me over the hill on. Fast and Furious 8, for sure. Uh, we talked a lot about F9. I don't want to oh, get too for- far into it again, but... We forgot one. Why? We did? What did we skip? Shaw. Hobbs and Shaw. <laughs> oh, right. Hobbs and Shaw is in between. I like that movie as a standalone movie. I know they're going to make a franchise out of it. I think they should just leave one, leave all, you know, well alone, one and done. <laughs> no more of those. <laughs> they're probably going to ruin it, but I don't know. Oh, no, bring it on. I want to see more Hobbs and Shaw. You, you like The Rock and Statham. I really do. I think they brought something special to this whole franchise and kind of revitalized it. Um, Statham definitely is Yeah. a good a good guy. Good I think they're, who's, th- they're these definitely fran- a these part of These movies bring in a lot of people, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who's the next person you want them to bring into the universe? Oh, that's a good question. Nobody. I think they've but they, they have enough people to pick from. They're they supposedly do, they're doing not two stop. more. They're supposedly doing two more and then they're done. We'll see oh, if really? that holds true. Yeah, they're doing a tenth movie that's split into two movies. Mm. And supposedly that's it. I think they have plenty of people to pull from. They should not introduce anybody new in the tenth. <laughs> you know that they're bringing someone new in, though. Sure. Like, do you think it'll be a new bad guy? Because Probably. Cypher's going to turn good. So who's the baddie? Nope. Right. No. Nope. Yeah. They got to have a, and then some, some in the last few seconds, they got to turn the real bad guy good and then turn him back bad just to keep with the pattern. <laughs> 
what I love about these bad guys is every bad guy is the actual orchestrator. Like fir- <laughs> not first, not First, you meet like I think Owen Shaw is the first. He's like, I've been in charge of all this, and it's like, oh no, it's actually my brother Deckard's been in charge. Oh no, it's actually been Charlize Theron Cipher. She's been in charge, and then we're like, oh no, 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 it's been Jacob. He's like every bad guy is the real orchestrator, and everyone below them is just their puppet who doesn't know they're their puppet, <laughs> and that's mm-hmm. so. Like eventually, we're gonna find out that Dom is the actual puppet. It's just one giant circle. And everything he does has been, has been like this butterfly effect that then affects him negatively. He doesn't realize it. Dom's going to die at the end. Oh, in, in, in like Jesus Christ posed. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. He, he's going to be martyred in these movies. For sure. Yep. Yeah. All right. I think I would like to see Viola Davis as the bad guy. Ooh. Bad, bad woman. Bad person. Ooh. That's Remember good... her in Widows? Uh-huh. Yeah. She was good. She was good in Widows. I think she could portray a bad, evil person pretty she's, well. She's good in everything. I know, but let's but let's bring her into the franchise. I am pro Viola Davis in this franchise. Yeah. Me too. I'd be fine with that. Although I'd prefer nobody knew. <laughs> but if we have to have somebody new, make it somebody Helen Mirren or Viola Davis or somebody you just don't expect. I don't need another action guy. Helen Mirren's already in this one. That's what I'm saying. Like, make oh. it somebody like that. Make it like mm. casting that you wouldn't expect. Like Helen Mirren, I wouldn't expect in these movies, and there she is. She's great. Right. N- know who they tried to introduce and then dropped like a t- hot potato right away? Oh. Who? Scott Eastwood. Oh yeah. Yeah, he was. He's in a it number for eight. A second. <laughs> yeah, and then <laughs> I think he's done. I don't. He was not in nine. I doubt we'll see Scott Eastwood come back in anything. Yeah. Well, Mr. Nobody really wasn't in nine either. Do we think we'll see him back? Oh, yeah. I, I think Mr. Nobody will keep keep, keep showing up. Even though. Yeah. I think he'll be in the other ones about again. as much as he was in this one. <laughs> Just no, enough it, it to really, move the plot somehow. Seven and eight was he was show up the most. And then, yeah, he'll, he'll pop up now. All right. Let's, let's do this. Rank these. Let's rank them. I'll uh, go first. Hit it, Kyle. Okay, my number 10 is number two. <laughs> too Fast, Too Furious. Uh, do not like that one. Number nine, Tokyo Drift. Justin Lin, Han, that's about it. Number eight is number four, which is Fast and Furious. I don't remember that movie at all. I just remember there being a lot of CG in it, and Letty dies at the beginning. Um, this is it. As we've been talking, the current one, F9, has fallen a couple spots. It is now my number seven. So it is below my number six, which is Hobbs and Shaw, which felt really bloated to me. Um, like when they get to I think it's they go to Hawaii, that just seemed like this fourth act on top of it. It just seemed like a little too much to be added in there. Uh, my number five is the original Fast and Furious, or the Fast and the Furious. Uh, it was fun to watch again. I think it holds up as a as a thing of its time, even though it's kind of point breaky. And then we get into like the popular ones my number four is furious seven for the reasons i said before what what does and what does not work my number three is fate of the furious that's a lot of a fun one uh my number two is fast and furious six great stunts and my number one which will probably be multiple people's number ones is fast five which is really the movie that solidified this whole franchise hmm. interesting we had a couple overlaps Ooh, just a couple all right I'll go next. Uh, my number 10 was number three. Uh, no surprise there. <laughs> I hate Tokyo Drift, except for Han. I love Han. Number nine was number two. Um, Tej, Tyrese, really the only good parts of it. Uh, number eight, you and I agree on this one, is number four. Uh, my number seven is number seven. Not my favorite. Um, Paul Walker never really did it for me. And so I really wasn't attached to him dying. Sorry, Paul Walker. She right. she cheered when she heard I the news. I did not cheer. Oh, that's that's cold. cold. I did not <laughs> cheer. You did not cheer. <laughs> but it was good because it introduced Jason Statham. Yes, so, Jason Statham. Yep. Yeah. Oh, so um, it, my was, number, it was good. It was good overall, I guess. Um Number six, I have F9. It's kind of right there in the middle. 
it wasn't my favorite, but it wasn't terrible. Um, Kyle and I, you and agree on number five um, is the original. Um, number four, I have number six, Fast and Furious 6. Um, number three is number five. I love that it's a heist movie. It's a really fun movie overall. Um, my number two is Hobbs and Shaw. Uh, Rock holds a helicopter with his muscles. That he does. He he, he does a he does this a, a Captain America stunt, yeah. but he's not a superhero. He's just the Rock. But you also have Idris Elba as a pretty good bad guy. Um, Vanessa. Kirby. Oh yeah, Vanessa Kirby comes in as Statham's, <laughs> Statham's sister. sister, even though yeah. they're like thirty years apart. And she did pretty good, like good fight scenes through the whole thing until like the last act when she was like cast aside because she had the disease that they were trying to fight. Or mm, well, that's right, she yeah. was on some machine. They they, yeah. they had to sideline her, so there could be a, a big punch off between the guys. Yeah. Um, and then my number one, no surprise, Fast Eight. The Fate of the Furious. Nice. All right, I'll go. Uh, My number 10, The Fast and the Furious, Tokyo Drift. Uh, I have not seen this movie, and I do not care. (laughs) Uh, Number nine, Fast and Furious. I have not seen this movie, um, and I'm annoyed that the title is so close to The Fast and the Furious. I forget That's sometimes silly. which one is which. That's really silly. Yeah. Uh, number eight, Too Fast, Too Furious. I've not seen this movie and I don't care. And the title <laughs> is terrible. <laughs> um, also, uh, there's a lot of fast in these movies. There's very little furious. Oh, Dom is furious all the time. Uh, is and he? so is Letty. Uh, that, like, yeah. Mad yeah. face. Yeah. Uh, moody, maybe. Okay. No, my number seven. Now, the rest of these I've seen. I don't remember any of them. And so these are literally ranked by what I put them in letterboxed. Um, so I'm just trusting my former self to have gotten it right. Uh, number seven, Fast Five. What? Yeah. Zach. Now, this is the only movie that I rewatched for this podcast. And I enjoyed it. I thought it was really fun. So I don't know why I gave it a two out of five on letterboxed. Wow, that's low. Um, but I got to trust my former self, uh, and it's my number seven, although I did like it on the rewatch. What would you give it now? Well, I skipped around, so I, I didn't get a full viewing. I, I okay. watched selected scenes. Okay. Uh, so it must have been the scenes I skipped that were really dragged it down. Uh, my number six, The Fast and the Furious, uh, the original. I don't care. Uh, number five, Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. I do remember this film. I gave it a two and a half. Uh, my number four, F9. I also remember this film. I gave it a two and a half. My number three is Fast and Furious 6. Uh, I like this one. My number two is The Fate of the Furious. I liked this one. I actually gave this three and a half stars. Nice. And, and my number one favorite Fast Furious movie is Furious 7. For some reason, I gave it three and a half stars. Don't remember this movie. Uh, it's my favorite Fast and Furious film. <laughs> so you're not a super fan? No, no. I'm I'm a I'm a aware of fan member. <laughs> yeah, aware of fan. <laughs> my number ten is the Fate of the Furious. Don't like Ooh. that movie. Ooh, you and Megan need to fight. <laughs> you hate oh, it, James. Don't like it. <laughs> you fade it. Um, d- didn't like it the first. Like this, probably the only one that I actively dislike. While I watch it. <laughs> uh, number nine, F9. Probably another movie that when I rewatch it someday, I will actively dislike it while I watch it. Um, my number eight, Fast and Furious. The kind of reset movie. Yeah. It's a reset movie. It's, it feels like a reset movie as you watch it. Uh, number seven, Fast and Furious, Tokyo Drift. Interesting take, but not much happens. Uh, number six, Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. I enjoyed it. There's not much bigger significance to the Fast and Furious world, but it's a spinoff, so it, it's not supposed to either. Uh, number five, Furious 7, which has the uh, Paul Walker stuff at the end. And I don't remember much of the movie other than that. 
Uh, number four, Fast and Furious 6, which I think is just tailwinding off Fast and Furious 5 for the most part. Uh, my number three, Too Fast, Too Furious, which is wow. of all the ones that you haven't seen that I would say you might actually not hate. It's Too Fast, Too Furious because it's a buddy cop movie, essentially. No, I like Paul Walker, and it was my favorite of the ones I haven't seen. Right. <laughs> But I'm saying if you wanted to explore any of those, you said you didn't care and you probably still won't. But if you were going to explore any of them, I would say that one because it is not what Fast and Furious is today, nor is it the original. You know what I mean? It's like Absolutely. It's, it's kind of it's its own thing in a I better agree. way, th- in a better way you. than Tokyo Drift was. Yes. For sure. Uh, then number two, the Fast and the Furious, the original, and number one, Fast Five, which is a great, fun, crazy action movie. I would yeah. say the plot doesn't really matter much. It's super soapy, actually, compared to all of them, and all of them are soapy. But that one is super soapy, and uh, the action is great in it. And it's like the first time you get to see a lot of people. It's like a lot of introductions of people that you're going to enjoy. Yeah, a lot of people got brought back for five. Yep. Right. Cool. Well, that was our uh, our Fast and Furious episode. Well, it wasn't the episode itself wasn't Fast and Furious, but we talked a lot of Fast and Furious for sure. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you disagree or agree with our opinions, uh, we'd love to hear about it via email. Send an email to hey guys at cinerealist.com. R double E L with an S on the end. Send a comment, a question, a list suggestion, a movie suggestion, any of those types of things. Don't forget, you can also watch us on YouTube. Subscribe to us there. Uh, even if you're not going to watch us there, go subscribe. Help us get to that magic number of 100. Leave us an Apple podcast review. If you haven't done that, follow us on social media. At Cinerealis on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Or you can follow me on my personal Twitter or Letterboxd account at YoJRB. You can follow me on Twitter or Letterboxd at Shobin. You can find me on Letterboxd at Peter SKB. Megan. You can find me on Instagram, Mendy Megs. M E H N D I M E G S. There will be links to all of those in the description of this episode. So if you want to click away there, that's where you should click away or something. (laughs) I think next week, possibly we're talking black widow. I think that was on the schedule. Probably we're talking black widow next week. Most likely. Yeah. Most likely. Uh, So if you want to pre-watch something, pre-watch that in theaters or on Disney plus for the low, low price $30. We'll see you guys next week. Until then, keep it Cinereal. It's over. Go home. Go.